How does the flagship Pascal-based GTX 1080 Ti perform on a MacBook? In this video, we'll show you. So after Nvidia announced and then released its highly anticipated Pascal drivers for Mac OS, I was extremely excited to try out the GTX 1080 Ti on my MacBook. This is of course the flagship gaming card from Nvidia. So I broke out the Akidio Node Thunderbolt 3 enabled eGPU enclosure. This box can accommodate a full sized double width GPU. So I'm going to unscrew it, open it up, slap in the GTX 1080 Ti, and then connect it to my MacBook Pro. Now keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to splurge for the high-end GTX 1080 Ti. In fact, Nvidia's drivers work for all Pascal based cards, so that means it works with the 1050, the 1050 Ti, the 1060, the 1070, the 1080, you get the point. So now we just need to connect the eight and six pin power connectors and we're good. So here it is folks, the GTX 1080 Ti inside the Akidio node ready to connect to my MacBook Pro. So I connect the power, my external display into the MacBook Pro via Thunderbolt 3. So now we're booting in a Mac OS and then you just wanna paste this command into terminal. Basically this downloads the Automate eGPU script gives it the right permissions, switches to the desktop, and then executes the script. So we'll open up terminal and then just literally copy and paste this string of terminal commands. So we'll just copy and then we'll paste and then press return on the keyboard. So first it downloads the script to the desktop. Then you want to enter in your password. I'll do that now. And this is important, make sure it detects your external GPU. You'll see it right here, GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. So it does detect my eGPU. Now it's time to download the Pascal web driver from Nvidia. So type Y for yes, then press return. And the drivers are about 62.2 megabytes. So it'll take a few seconds to finish the download. Once it does, it's gonna remove the validation checks from the package. And now it's ready to install. So just type Y on your keyboard and press return. So the installation will take just a few seconds. Just be patient and wait on it. Once it is completed, it's gonna rebuild the caches and then we'll be done. Okay, we're finished. So now it's just a matter of restarting our Mac. So let's do that right now. All right, so we're coming back up. We're gonna boot back into Mac OS. And we're back to the desktop. Now when you go to the mini bar, you should see an NVIDIA logo. And this shortcut allows you to quickly switch between the NVIDIA web driver and the built-in internal graphics on your MacBook. Now you'll also find a shortcut to NVIDIA's driver manager, which is located in system preferences. And here you'll find some duplicate functionality, switching between the drivers, and you'll find other items like being able to update the drivers, for instance. Okay, so the answer to the question we've all been waiting for, how do these drivers perform? How does the GTX 1080 Ti perform on a MacBook? Well, hmm, it, it's kind of a mixed bag to be honest with you. There are some obvious performance gains when compared to the internal graphics. Like look at this chart right here. It's obvious that the GTX 1080 Ti is miles ahead of the internal Intel Iris 550 graphics. I mean, look at the Heaven Ultra benchmark. You see 91 frames per second versus 10. So that really shows the potential of Nvidia's beta Pascal web drivers. However, Despite the stark differences in benchmarks, it doesn't really translate all that well to real world gaming performance, as you'll see here. Now this is Rocket League, which isn't a super demanding game, but I am running it at 4K resolution using high settings. And you'll notice that the frames per second stay somewhere around 30 or less. It really is kind of choppy. And the same thing happened when I was playing Abduction from the Mac App Store running at 1080p. It was choppy as well. I mean, this is a 1080 Ti. It should be performing much better than this. But again, these are beta web drivers and they obviously lack the optimization that you'll find on Windows. Now, I know this sounds weird, but if you're going to use an eGPU setup on a MacBook Pro, you want to install Bootcamp. You just want to do it because that is the main reason why you would want an eGPU setup with a Pascal based card because Pascal based cards don't really perform all that well with OpenCL tasks and things like that. So Final Cut Pro is gonna run really terrible. But when it comes to gaming, if you're in the right environment, if you're on Windows and you're gaming, oh man, it's amazing. Not only do the games perform way better on the Windows environment than they do on the MacBook Pro, but you can also drive the internal display on your MacBook directly with the eGPU. 
and the benchmarks actually translate to real world gaming performance increases. So you can see that I've added Windows external display and Windows internal display powered by the GTX 1080 Ti. And as you can see in the Windows environment, it walks all over Mac OS using the same benchmarks. And to be honest, it's not really a huge surprise that this is the case. I mean, we knew that these were beta web drivers going into it. And we also know that Windows just has a history of being better when it comes to gaming in general. So this right here, 4K Rocket League performs great 60 frames per second locked in stark difference between the same test on Mac OS. So ladies and gentlemen, it's not stupid to want to run a Pascal card with your MacBook, but these cards are primarily aimed at gamers. And as we've seen, the games perform better on Windows. So if you want this type of setup, if you want a portable machine that has that power, then it's probably best to run bootcamp and have Windows installed on your MacBook as well. That's not to say that there aren't any valid use cases for an eGPU for Mac OS users, because there are. In a future video, I'm going to show why this 200 some odd dollar card is more valuable for Mac OS users than the $700 GTX 1080 Ti. So thumbs up if you want to see that video. Ladies and gentlemen, would you consider an eGPU setup for your MacBook Pro? Let me know down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.